Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome to our Tuesday Bible study. And God has been amazingly merciful unto us. The Bible says that it's by his mercies that we are not consumed. Wherever you are, will you lift up your voice, lift up your hands, and let's bless the name of the Lord. Let's worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Let's exalt and magnify him. Let's appreciate and adore him because he is king of kings and lord of lords. He is omnipotent, omnipresence, and omniscience. He is the CEO of the universe, the one who was, who is, and who is to come, who is mighty in word and mighty in deed, who spake and it was done. He commanded and he stood fast. He declared and it was established. He has been God from everlasting and will remain God even unto the end. Lift up your voice wherever you are. Give him the glory. Exalt his name. Appreciate him. Worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Thank you for letting you and I see another beautiful day. For his faithfulness, for his provision, for his protection, for how far he has brought us. The psalmist says, bless the Lord, O my soul. Let all that is within me bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Who forgives all our iniquities and heals all our diseases. Lift up the voice wherever you are. Give him the glory. Bless his name. Thank him for your loved ones. Thank him for your family. Thank him for your friends. Thank him for your job. Thank him for your business. Thank him for your children and grandchildren. Thank him for your finances. Thank him for supernatural supplies. Thank him for your health. Thank him that you are accepted in the beloved. Yes, for Jesus that died and resurrected, that you are saved. Thank him for the access that we have through the blood of Jesus to come to the throne of grace and ask for help in time of need. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we bless your name. Father, we worship you. Father, we exalt you. Father, we appreciate you. Father, we glorify your name. There is no one like you. The God of Jeshurun who rises in the excellence of his power. Take all the glory. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for what you are going to do. Because you are too faithful to fail. We give you praise, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Can I hear an amen to that? Will you lift up your voice and lift up your hands one more time? And let's surrender our hearts unto him. Say, Father, I surrender my heart unto you. My spirit, my soul, and my body, everything that I am and everything that I have belongs to you. You are my God. You are my maker. You are my creator. You are my redeemer. You are my strong and mighty tower. You are my shield. You are my buckler. You are my strength. You are my song. You are my source. You are everything unto me. I belong to you, Jesus. I don't belong to any other. I don't belong to the devil. I don't belong to the world. I don't even belong to myself. I belong to you, Jesus. Have your way in my life. Rule and reign in my life. Take control of my life. Lift up your voice wherever you are and surrender unto him. Every doubt and every fear, every worry and every anxiety, every perplexity and every confusion, every issue, every challenge, every problem, every, no matter how stubborn, no matter how long, whatever is bothering you, lay it at his feet. Sicknesses, diseases, afflictions, attacks of the enemy, sieges, whatever they are, lay it at his feet. Challenges with your children, challenges with your marriage, challenges with your finances, with your health, lay it at his feet. I promise you today that before the end of this service, if you can receive it, it shall be turned into a glorious testimony. Because he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus will give you rest today. Concerning that situation, whoever you are, if you just connect to the power of God that is here right now, Jesus will give you rest. Concerning that situation, Kande brother, Father, we surrender. Our inadequacies, our frustrations, our weaknesses, our confusions and perplexities. Father, we repent of everything we have done or left undone individually or collectively, on behalf of ourselves, on behalf of our families, on behalf of our communities, on behalf of our churches, on behalf of this nation and the nations of the world. Father, we invoke the blood of Jesus against every accusation of the enemy, against every cause and every yoke and every spell and every enchantment and every incantation. We invoke the blood of Jesus and we take authority over principalities, over powers, 
over the rulers of darkness of this world, over spirits of wickedness in high places. We frustrate all the activities of the devil. We scatter all his works. We paralyze his operations. We destroy his strongholds. We bombard every one of his positions. Satan, we bind you. You and your cohorts. Spirits of infirmity, spirits of affliction, spirits of limitation, spirits of stagnation, spirits spirits of blindness, spiritual spouses, marine spirits, water spirits, familiar spirits, unclean spirits, serpentine spirits, ancestral spirits, whatever spirit you are, under the sound of my voice, today we bind you and break your power and your hegemony over the people of God. Spirits of cancer, we bind you. Spirits of untimely death, we bind you and break your power over the people of God. Candele Brothers Italian, Rigondos Kiproma Secretary, Maligados Kitari Masin, and we set them free today. Rakata Izi, Likonde Brada, Zaski Promo Shikatania, and we take victory. Now lift up a voice now and take victory. In our lives, we take victory. In our families, we take victory. In our health, we take victory. Take victory over that sickness. Take victory over that disease. Take victory over that limitation. Take victory over that affliction. Lift up voice and take victory. In the lives of our children, we take victory. In our businesses, we take victory. In our jobs, we take victory. In this community, we take victory. Against every assault of the weekend, we take victory. Every day of this month, we take victory. Every day of this year, we take victory. La Koto Brothers Italia. Zaske Promo Shako Tedemose. Ligandi Brothers. Lift up your voice and take victory. The Bible says, You shall have whatsoever you say. Over that mountain we take victory over the hindrance man de laga regain the brothers in this city in this state mark against every confrontation we take victory against every plan of the enemy we take victory market a brothers ke para machine li kandes ke para machine in ke promotion yes in that immigration issue take victory in la condo rada as ke promotion whatever it is take victory now the bible says you shall have whatsoever you say la kende rados ke talia and we declare that Jesus is Lord. Will you lift up your voice and declare it? That Jesus is Lord. He's Lord over my life. He's Lord over my family. He's Lord over my home. He's Lord over my finances. He's Lord over my job. He's Lord over my business. Open your mouth and declare Jesus Lord over your children, over your career, over your business, over your family, over your home, over this land, over this land. Jesus is Lord. Over this city and this state, Jesus is Lord. To the glory of the Father. In Jesus. <clears throat> name we are prayed. Can I hear an amen to that? Can I hear a believing amen to that? Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Today, we shall begin another series. Still under the canopy of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. By this time, we shall be looking at the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. And our anchor text comes from Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. From the King James Version, it reads, It says, By the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Will you lift up your voice and say, Father, speak unto me. Open my understanding to receive your word. Let me hear your voice today that will change my life, that will rearrange the foundation of, foundations of my character, that will change my destiny and change my story. Father, thank you for your word that is forever settled in heaven. Move by your spirit tonight. Let no one escape the power of your word. Break strongholds that resist the fruit of the spirit. In the lives of everyone under the sound of my voice, and change stories. Heal and deliver. And to you, we give all the glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Can I hear an amen to that? Can I hear a believing amen to that? Somebody shout hallelujah. 
Amen. Amen. To begin with, what is the fruit of the Holy Spirit? Number one, the fruit of the Holy Spirit refers to the nature of the Spirit revealed in the life of the believer. It is spiritual qualities which should be evident in the lives of all Christians and all believers. The fruit of the Spirit is Christian character in both personal and social conduct. The fruit of the Spirit is the character of Christ. Is the character of Christ. Is the character that we Christians are supposed to exhibit personally and socially. Can I hear an amen to that? Now, we, you know, we looked at the gift of the Spirit, so I'm just going to draw a few contracts between the, the fruit of the Spirit and the gift of the Spirit. Number two, what is the fruit of the Holy Spirit? Number two, while the gifts of the Holy Spirit is for power, that's what they are for power, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is for character in the life of the believer. It's for character in the life of the believer. Number three, while the gift of the Holy Spirit is for ministry to the body, why the gift of the Holy Spirit is to minister to others, to the body of Christ. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is for the maturity of the individual believer. It's for the edification. It's for the growth and maturity of the individual believer. Without the growth and maturity of the individual believer, you cannot minister effectively unto others. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. What is the fruit of the Spirit? Holy Spirit number five. John number four. While no believer has all the gifts of the Spirit, every believer is required to have all the fruit of the Spirit. You know, in the gift of the Spirit, we say no believer has all. Everyone has severally. Some have one, some have two, some have three. As the Holy Spirit gives, but no believer has all. Amen. But the fruit of the Spirit, every believer is required to have all of it. All of the fruit. Amen. What is the fruit of the Spirit? Number five. The fruit of the Spirit is the evidence of spiritual maturity. Amen. Spiritual gifts don't prove spiritual maturity. The gifts of the Spirit do not prove spiritual maturity. The fact that you can lay hands on the sick and they recover, or you can, you can raise the dead, doesn't mean that you're spiritually mature. Amen. The fruit of the Spirit is the evidence of spiritual maturity. That's how we measure spiritual maturity, by the fruit of the Spirit. So when Jesus said, by their fruits we shall know them, he was talking about the fruit of the Spirit, by their character, by their love, by their peace, by their joy. That's how you will know them. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. Number six, what is the fruit of the Spirit? Number six, like fruit in the natural world, the fruit of the Spirit is the result of the process of life. It is the result of the process of life. It is a product of the Holy Spirit. At, it, is the, it is the product of the Holy Spirit at work in your life and your response to this work. The fruit of the Spirit is the work of the Holy Spirit in your life and your response to that. The Holy Spirit is going to be working, is working in our lives to help us develop the fruit of the Spirit. And the way we respond determines how much of the fruit of the, the, fruit of the Spirit we develop. Amen. He's working in our lives to affect our character, to affect the way we behave, to affect our conduct. Amen. To, 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 to develop this fruit, this, this fruit of the Spirit, long suffering and self control and all those things. And our response is important, it's critical to our capacity to develop those, those, the fruit of the Spirit. Can I add amen to that? Amen. So, number seven. Just as fruit takes time to develop in the natural world, spiritual fruit or the fruit of the Spirit takes time to develop. It is the product of, of growth in the life of the Spirit. It is the product of natural growth in the life of the Spirit. It takes time, just like fruit doesn't just come and you don't just plant a tree and suddenly it starts producing fruit. No, it takes time. The same way the fruit of the Spirit requires time. But you can receive the gift today and begin to work in that gift. Amen. But the fruit of the Spirit requires time to develop and it grows. Amen. As it goes. Can I hear an amen to that? And then point number eight. The Bible teaches us of two kinds of spiritual fruit. Two kinds of spiritual fruit. Point number eight. 
is the outer fruit or the fruit of evangelism or the fruit of soul winning. So there are two kinds, the outer fruit or the fruit of evangelism or the fruit of soul winning, which is the first kind. And the second kind is the fruit of godly spiritual qualities or the fruit of the spirit, amen, or the inner fruit. So one is the outer fruit, which is soul winning and all that. The other one is the inner fruit, which is the fruit of the spirit. So those are the two kinds of spiritual fruit the Bible teaches. So we're going to begin <clears throat> by focusing on the outer fruit or the fruit of evangelism. That's what we're going to focus on today. So when we talk about the fruit or the outer fruit or the, or the fruit of evangelism, what are we talking about? Point number one. <clears throat> when Adam and Eve were created by God, the first command he gave them was to be fruitful and multiply in the natural world. That's the first command he gave them. Be fruitful and multiply in the natural world. That was their primary <clears throat> assignment. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. It says, Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over, over the fish of the sea, over the best of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Be fruitful. That was his first word that he spoke to them. Be fruitful. That's why nobody, no, no, nobody is permitted to be barren. No. No. Even if you're not a believer, how much more when you're a believer? You're not permitted to be bad. The first word that came out of him is to be fruitful in the, in the, in the natural world and multiply it. So every barrenness and miscarriage under the sound of my voice terminates now. In the name of Jesus. Kali Raduski. Raduski Pramashan Amen. So his first command was be fruitful and multiply. Number two, in the natural world, because God did not stop there. In the natural world, God set a cycle of continuous reproduction. This cycle of reproduction that God said will continue even unto the millennial reign of Christ. Amen. It is endless. Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. He said, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, that's reproduction, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. Amen. That is a cycle of reproduction. While the earth remains, it shall not cease. So God said, this, because reproduction is very important, he said, be fruitful, multiply. So he set up a cycle of reproduction that while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, gold and heat, winter and summer and day and night, shall not cease. The process of reproduction must continue. Nothing can stop it. No witch, no wizard can stop it. That's why nothing can stop your fruitfulness. Can I hear an amen to that? In the natural. Now look at it again. Point number three. From the beginning of the world, God called his people, this point number three, from the beginning of the world, God called his people to spiritual reproduction as well as natural reproduction. Adam and Eve were to reproduce both spiritually and physically. God's original plan was that they were to fill the earth with people created in the image of God who walked in fellowship with God. That was God's original plan. Adam and Eve were here to, if they had not sinned, they would have reproduced and multiplied and filled the earth with people created in the image of God who walked in fellowship with God. So, Adam and Eve were not just supposed to reproduce naturally, they were also supposed to reproduce spiritually. So God has called the people to both natural and spiritual reproduction from the beginning. But of course Adam fell and the spiritual reproduction was interrupted. Can I hear an amen to that? So when it was interrupted and the whole world was lost in sin, God decided to raise a people through Abraham through whom spiritual reproduction could continue. That takes me to point number four. When God raised up the nation of Israel as a people, through whom he could demonstrate his power and plan for the world, he called them to be spiritually reproductive. In fact, they were supposed to be a kingdom of priests who would bring other nations to God. He told Abraham, in you, through you, all the ends of the earth shall be blessed. Through you, everybody will get to know me. Amen. Exodus 19 and verse 6. 
He says, and you shall be to me a kingdom. He was talking to Israelites now. He says, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. You shall be to me a kingdom of priests. So the nation of Israel was supposed to be a kingdom of priests. A kingdom of people that carry the knowledge and the understanding of God and spread it around, getting people to come and know God. Because that was priests do. Priests bring information from, from God to the people and also take and connect the people unto God. Amen. There's supposed to be a kingdom of priests. Look at it in Psalm 80, verse 8 to 10. Here he was talking about Israel again. He said, you have brought a vine out of Egypt. You have cast out the nations and planted it. You prepared room for it and caused it to take deep root. And it filled the land. The hills were covered with the shadows. And the mighty cedars with its bows. Now the vine that this passage is talking about, which God brought out of Egypt, was the nation of Israel. He wanted them to bear spiritual fruit by revealing the true God to the hidden nations around them. But instead, Israel sinned and became like the hidden. They began to worship idols and wanted a visible human king to reign over them instead of the invisible king of kings. So finally, God said of Israel in Hosea chapter 10 verse 1, He said, Israel is an empty vine. That means Israel has not reproduced spiritually. They have not reproduced spiritually the way they ought to reproduce. And because of it was because of their spiritual unfruitfulness that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 21, verse 43. He said, Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. The kingdom of God will be taken to, from you and given. He was telling the Israelites, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. That's how the gospel came to the Gentiles. Amen. Because Israel was not fruitful. Was not reproducing. Spiritually. The way they are supposed to reproduce. To get the nations of the world to come to know God through them. So he brought the gospel to the Gentiles. Amen. And raised up a Christian bride. Which is the church that will carry out that, that process of spiritual reproduction. And make the true good God, the true God known to the whole world. So, point number five. So, as believers, Jesus has chosen us to bear fruit through evangelism or evangelizing of the world. John chapter 15, verse 16. He says, you do not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you or ordained you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. I appointed you, I ordained you, I chose you, that is to every believer, so that you can go and bear fruit, and that the fruit that you bear shall remain. And when you do that, whatever you ask of my Father shall be given unto you. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. His last point number six, his last command to his followers, or to us Christians, was one of spiritual reproduction. When he was leaving the earth, the last thing he said, the last command he gave the believer, he gave every one of us, was one of spiritual reproduction. Mark 16 and verse 15. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go and reproduce spiritually. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. He said, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. His last command to us was that of spiritual reproduction. Amen. In fact, while he was there, he challenged his disciples. That's point number seven. He challenged disciples with a great vision of spiritual harvest. He challenged the disciples with a great vision of spiritual harvest. Look at it in John chapter 4. <clears throat> Verse 35 to 36. He said, Do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. And he who, he who, reaps, he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit. For eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. He challenged his disciples, say, the harvest is already ripe. Amen. If I even ask disciples, 
ask us. He said that we should pray the Lord of the harvest to bring us. He said the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. That we should pray the Lord of the harvest to bring in more laborers for the harvest. Can I hear an amen to that? Can I hear an amen to that? If you read the scripture, you understand. And that's what we're saying in point number eight. That evangelism or soul winning, that's point number eight. Evangelism or soul winning and establishment or, spirit, or what we call spiritual reproduction is the heartbeat of God. That's what God is about. That is his most important motivation. Amen. For God so loved the Lord that he, the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Spiritual reproduction. Luke chapter 19 verse 10. Say, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That is the heartbeat of God. That's the utmost desire of God. That everyone should come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 and 4. He says, Therefore, I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. God desires all men. He said, that's why he said we should pray, both for kings and for all men, because God wants all of them saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Once all of them say, that is his heartbeat, that is his utmost desire. That's his heartbeat. Winning souls, getting people into the kingdom, getting people saved from their sins and saved from the clutches of the devil and saved from sickness and disease and bringing them into the kingdom of God, establishing them in the church. That is his utmost desire. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9, he says, he said, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. He doesn't want any to perish. He wants everyone to come to repentance. That's his heartbeat. That's why you are saved. That's why you're listening to this. That's why you're still alive. Because you're, you're relevant to his heartbeat, to his purpose. That's why he sent Jesus Christ to come and die and save us can I hear an amen to that? Amen. Can I hear an amen to that? So it's the heartbeat of God. So if you become a soul winner, or you're engaging in evangelism, you're engaging in the most primary, the most primary, most important desire of God. The reason God wants to prosper you is so that your prosperity can be used to save others. You see, he wants to bless. That's what he told Abraham. Say, I'll bless you and make you a blessing. How will Abraham become a blessing? By bringing others to the knowledge of the truth. So that they can be saved. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. That is why Proverbs 11 verse, that's why, sorry, point number nine. Say, evangelism or soul winning is proof or evidence of wisdom. Of wisdom. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 30. Say the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. But he who wins souls is wise. It means that if you are not engaged in evangelism. If you are not engaged in winning souls. You are foolish. Very simple. He said he who wins souls is wise. He is, he, because when you get involved in soul winning. You are getting involved in the business of God. That's the cooperation of God. So he said, he who wins souls is wise. So if you're not winning souls, you're not sharing the gospel, it means you're foolish. Can I hear an amen to that? But you can change to that and start becoming wise. Can I? And start sharing the gospel. He who wins souls is wise. Soul winning is proof of wisdom. Amen. And you know by wisdom, I mean this is Proverbs 15, I think, and verse 8, I think, and verse 15. He said, by wisdom, kings reign. 
So if you win soul and you're wise, it means that you will reign and you will rule and you will dominate and you will excel and you will prosper. You will be the head and not the tail. You will be above only and not beneath. If you win souls. Amen. Because by wisdom kings reign. And he who wins souls is wise. Amen. In fact the Bible says that by wisdom a house is furnished. Amen. A home is built. And filled with all kinds of delicacies. So if you win souls it means that your home will be built. And you can furnish, you can have everything that you want. He said it in John 15 and verse 8. I'm oh, sorry, John 15 and verse 16. He said, I chose you that you should bear fruit. And that when you bear fruit, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will do it. John 15 and verse 16. Amen. Whatever you ask, when you bear fruit. You see, some of you are asking and you're not getting an answer. It's because you're not bearing fruit. The fruit of evangelism. God is not wicked. But God has a system of blessings. He has a system. Amen. And that system runs through evangelism. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. Point number 10. Soul winners are guaranteed to shine like stars forever. Soul winners, those are some of the benefits of winning souls. They are guaranteed to shine like stars forever. Daniel chapter 12 verse 3. Say those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn, in many, who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Amen. Not a star for 20 years. Not a star for 50 years. Who is your biggest star today? In 100 years, you probably may not know much about them. But when you get engaged in soul winning, you'll be a star forever. Let me prove it to you. For instance, some of the biggest stars in the world are people like Apostle Paul and Apostle Peter and Apostle John. Those were soul winners. They've been stars for 2,000 years. Some of you are calling your children those names because of them. There are universities named after them. There are schools and towns named after them. There are cities named after them. Amen. There are books being written above them. Millions of books. Their lives are being studied across the world. For 2,000 years, they've been stars. I know what they did. They were soul winners. Oh, let me tell you about it. It's the other one, Abraham. Abraham, for 3,500 years or more, has been a star. Why? Because they're soul winner. The Bible says that he said, the Bible, God said of Abraham, he said, I know that he will teach his children to fear me. And he taught his children to fear the Lord. Apostle Paul, Apostle James, Apostle John, Apostle Peter, soul winners. And they are the biggest stars. He said, those that turn many to righteousness, they shall shine like stars forever. So in eternity, we're still going to be talking about Apostle Paul and Apostle Peter and Apostle John. Soul winners. Can I hear an amen to that? Can I hear an amen to that? Point number 11. God pays the wages of soul winners. Oh yes. When you're a soul winner, God pays your salary. And no corporation can pay like God. <laughs> no, no company can pay like God. Amen. Look at it here. John 4, 35 and 36. He said, do you not say... Do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. Now watch verse 36. And he who reaps receives wages. He who reaps receives wages. He who reaps receives wages. The harvest are the souls. If you engage in reaping the harvest, you get paid. Amen. You get paid. That's why, that's why Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says that without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must understand that he is, must know that he is, that he exists. And that he is a rewarder, a rewarder 
of those who diligently seek him, a rewarder of those who work for him. Amen. He said, I have not called the children of Jacob in vain. No. God doesn't use people. He blesses them. When he calls you to work for him, he blesses them. Soul winners get paid. Amen. And that is why the end time church is going to be the most glorious of all the churches. Of, I'll be the glo- most glorious. We'll, 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 we'll be raptured in a blaze of glory. Because as this end time revival hits, people in the church will be blessed as they win souls, as they bring people to the con- to, to, to bring so bring people, people to the kingdom. They'll be so blessed. They'll be paid. Nobody can pay like God. Nobody. Because his pay includes health insurance, includes all kinds of insurance. No stress. Stress free. Can I hear an amen to that? Point number 12. So winning brings God honor. And God honors those who honor him. He brings God honor. And God honors those who honor him. John 15 and verse 8. He said, by this my father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. So you be my disciples. By this my father is glorified. By this. By what? By you bearing much fruit. By you winning souls. My father is glorified. So winning brings God honor. And then in 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 30b, he says, for those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. So if you are not winning souls, you are probably despising the Lord. And you may not be honored. So winning brings honor to the Lord. And the Lord said, those that honor me, he said, I will honor. Those that bring me honor, I will honor. Oh, Jesus. The most profitable thing you can do in your life is to engage in soul winning. The blessing that comes is not just for you. For your generation, your generation, generation, generation. Kai. All through your generations. Can I hear an amen to that? That's the blessing that Abraham is still enjoying. Can I hear an amen to that? To be involved in the business of God. Which is soul winning. In the heartbeat of God. You know, you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that heaven throws a party when one soul comes to the Lord. When heaven throws a party, heaven will rejoice over one soul. If you are the reason that one soul came, joy will never dry up in your home. <laughs> La, just keep on. If you are the reason you brought the soul that make heaven to throw a party, you will never lack <laughs> reason to throw parties in your life. Can I hear an amen to that? But a lot of people don't understand this very simple secret. That's why they are struggling. Amen. Amen. Point number 13. Soul winning. Evangelism or soul winning guarantees the manifest presence of God. The manifest presence of God. Soul winners have the manifest. And you know the manifest presence of God is the favor of God. It's the favor of God. Those who engage in evangelism and soul winning, they are guaranteed the manifest presence of God. Look at it in Mark chapter 16, verse 20. He said, and they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word through their accompanying signs. Amen. When you go out, when you go on evangelism, when you're sharing the gospel, God's manifest presence is with you. He said, the Lord walking with them. Because that's his business. So if you say you're going to carry out his business, he's going to go with you. He told them, he said, go into all the worlds and preach and make disciples. He said, lo, I am with you, even until the end. You're guaranteed God's presence when you go on evangelism. When you make it your business to win souls. You're guaranteed God's presence. And God's presence is God's favor. <laughs> and God's presence is God's protection. You're guaranteed. Can I hear an amen to that? Point number 14. So winning keeps one spiritually and physiologically fit. It keeps you healthy. It keeps you healthy. See, when you're a soul winner, you're invaluable to the kingdom. No devil can take you out. You're invaluable to the kingdom. That's why I say, that's why I'm not afraid. When I'm flying on a plane and, or I'm going places and, and doing stuff, I'm not afraid of any danger. Because I cannot die. Why? 
I, I'm invaluable to the kingdom. I'm working for God. Amen. I'm doing important work for the kingdom. I, I cannot just die like, like chicken or die like anyhow. I declare it every time. I say, if the plane was ordained or doomed to crash, and I'm in the plane, it cannot crash. In Jesus' name. If it crashes, I'll survive. <laughs> Can they let us get out easy there? <laughs> Why? Because I'm working for the King of Kings. I'm, I'm, I'm engaged in his business. I'm about my father's business. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. So winning keeps you spiritually and physiologically fit. That also means that unfruitfulness is dangerous to your physical and spiritual destiny. Look at it in John chapter 15 verse 1 to 2. He said, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. That's dangerous if you're not buying fruit. Amen. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. He keeps that branch fit. Amen. He trims it. Trims away the fat. <laughs> Amen. That it might, it might bear fruit. Make it fit. Make it more efficient. Make it strong. So that it will bear more fruit. The one that does not bear fruit, he takes it away. So if you are a believer, you are fruit, you're fruitless. Your spiritual and physical destiny is in danger. Is in danger. Amen. Look at it. Remember, people that people that are people that are engaged in soul winning hardly backslide. They find it difficult to backslide. It's those that have become lukewarm, armchair Christians. Amen. They are the ones that easily fall away. When you are engaged in evangelism, it keeps you spiritually and physiologically fit. Can I hear an amen to that? Point number 15. So winning is evidence of discipleship. And discipleship is evidence of spiritual growth and maturity. John chapter 15 and verse 8. Say, by this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. So you will be my disciples. So so winning is evidence of discipleship. Those that are engaged, that's one of the marks of a disciple. That is engaged in winning so he's engaged in the father's business amen now you're taking up your cross every day and following him what is that taking up your cross your business of winning souls of bringing people to the kingdom that's our cross that's our responsibility responsibility he said take my yoke on me and learn of me amen he said give me your own come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest take my yoke of me from me and learn on me for my yoke is easier my body is light what is his yoke getting souls saved. He says it's easy and it's light because you don't do it by your power. You, do, you don't do it by your strength. You do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. Point number 16. Soul winning or evangelism is the responsibility of every believer. It is every believer's responsibility. It's not just for those that, are, that have the gift of evangelism. Or those that are called to be evangelists. No, it's the response of every believer. Amen. Some Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 18. He said, Now all things are of God, who reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. He has given us the ministry of reconciliation. He has given it to every one of us. We are responsible to reconcile others, to help others be reconciled to God. Point number 17. The power of the Holy Spirit enables believers to be spiritually fruitful through evangelism. That's one of the reasons the Holy Spirit was given. To, to make us powerful witnesses. Powerful witnesses. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. It says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So we'll be witnessed through the development of the fruit of the Spirit so that people see our lifestyle and it attracts them to God. And we'll be witnesses through the powerful, the preaching of the gospel, being a witness, being powerfully sharing the gospel with power. Amen. People getting healed, getting sick, getting delivered. Amen. Getting their breakthroughs and all that. And that brings them to God. 
that establishes the authority and the power of God in their lives. Amen. So the Spirit of the Holy Spirit, that's, that's why the Holy Spirit came to empower us to be witnesses. Witnesses with our life and witnesses with what we do as we share the gospel with the power of God demonstrated. Can I hear an amen to that? Point number 18. Amen. The method of spiritual reproduction is given in 2 Timothy 2 and verse 2. Amen. Look at what it says in 2 Timothy 2 verse 2. It says, And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. The things you have heard, commit to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So every believer is to teach the gospel to people who also reproduce by teaching others. And for some of you, you start with your family, with your children. You won't even take your children to church because you're busy pursuing the dollar. You start with your family, with your children. That's why God gave them to you, that you teach them. And you can teach others in your office and teach your friends and your family members and share with them. That's the pattern of reproduction. That what you have received, you teach them. That this, what you're hearing now, you go share with somebody. You know, there's somebody they come to church and they are soaking in, soaking in, hearing, hearing. They're not sharing with anybody. And that's why they're not growing spiritually. It's in sharing that you grow. <laughs> it's in sharing that you, you, put, you put the things you're learning to practice. Amen. So every believer is supposed to teach the gospel to others who also reproduce by teaching other people. Can I hear an amen to that? Now that takes me to point 19. You say, okay, I cannot teach. I don't know enough to teach. Well, you can invite others to church so they could be taught. Amen. You can share this message with all your friends and family and all the platforms that you have and invite others. You can invite them to any of our programs so they can be taught. Amen. Luke chapter 14, verse 23, it says, Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Invite others. Amen. You cannot, may not be able to teach, but you'll be able to invite and share. The same way you share jokes all over the place and share and share and share terrible horror, horror, horror happenings and news and news all over the place. You can share the gospel too. And share this message too. Can I hear an amen to that? Because point number 20, a full church honors God more than an empty one. Hello, I want you to get that. A full church honors God. He said, bring them that my house may be filled. A full church honors God more than an empty one. Proverbs 14 and verse 28. He said, in a multitude of people is a king's honor. But in the lack of people is the downfall of a prince. And the multitude of people is a king's honor. A full church honors God more than an empty one. Can I hear an amen to that? So just as God established a cycle of harvest in the natural world, he also established a cycle of reproduction in the spiritual world. And just as the natural cycle of seed time and harvest is unending, so is the cycle of spiritual harvest. It's unending. And it's our responsibility. Is your responsibility, is my responsibility. Will you take up your when you say take up your cross and follow me? It's not suffering he's talking about. No. Well, it includes some sacrifice that you have to make, but it's the sacrifice of getting engaged in the father's business of winning souls, of praying for souls to be saved, of inviting them to church, of following up and encouraging them, of evangelizing. That's what it is. Can I hear an amen to that? Lift up your hands and give God thanks for what you have received. Give him thanks, come on. Bless his name. Worship him, exalt him for what you have received. Give him thanks, give him thanks, give him thanks. Next week we're going to be dealing with the inner fruit of the Holy Spirit. But give him thanks for the outer fruit, amen, of the Holy Spirit. Give him thanks for grace and ask him for grace to help you evangelize and be a soul winner the spirit of soul winner to be deposited in you lift up a voice and thank him Monday, brother the passion for winning souls 
to pursue the lost. Now, if you're watching and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to invite you to make Jesus your Lord and Savior today. Can I pray with you right where you are? Lift up your voice and say after me with all your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner and I need you to save me. I believe you died for me and rose on the third day that I may be justified. Today I confess and repent of all my sins. I forsake them. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Be my Lord and Savior. From today, I promise to serve you in the name of Jesus. Can I hear an amen to that? If you pray that prayer with all your heart, we believe you got born again. Wherever you are, look for a Bible believing church and be planted. Those that are planted, they shall flourish. Or you can join our online church. Our website will tell you how. And I promise you, God will take you places you've never been before. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you today that the grace that has brought you, that grace will preserve you, that grace will prosper you, and that grace will establish you in Christ Jesus until he's coming. And I break the power of sin over you. You will never go back to your vomit again. In the name of Jesus. Can I hear an amen to that? Now make sure to reach out to us through any of our contact points so we can send you resources that can help you with your work with the Lord. Amen. And keep you in our prayers. Welcome to the family of God. Everyone else, I don't know if we can take up to this. I wanted to do about two or three prayers, but I'm not sure we can be able to do that. But let's do this first prayer. Lift up your voice with me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, baptize me and every member of this church with your burden for our families, friends, colleagues, churches, and communities. Let compassion and zeal for the lost, consume the heart of every believer and compel each one of us to pursue the lost until they are saved and dis discipled in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray. La conto brada ski poro jande. Maliga do ski pro masiki tere bashini. I kata ski para magata ni masiki. Father, in the name of Jesus, baptize me and every member of this church. We dip your burden for our families, your burden for our friends, your burden for our colleagues, your burden for our churches, and your burden for our communities. Let compassion and zeal for the Lord consume us. Let the fire of soul wind. baptize us with the fire of soul. Wind. Let it consume the heart of every believer so that we will pursue the Lord until they are saved and established in church. We will pursue the Lord until they are discipled and untiring and untiring commitment to pursue the Lord, to share the word, to evangelize, to win souls. Father, baptize us with that commitment. Baptize us with that fire. Le Kote, brother, Zaskeporo, Janeski, Malika, Doskotem, give us a burden, Lord, for our families, for our churches, for our communities, like in the Rada, Zaskeporo, to bring them to of Christ for revival, Nikoto City, Skipramajan, the Skipom, Lake Gendis, Skipomatan, the Skipom, Skipom, in Jesus. Then we have prayed. Can I hear an amen to that? Receive a fresh baptism of the fire of soul winning, of God's burden or His heart for your family. For your friends, for your colleagues, for your churches and your communities. We release compassion and zeal for the lost. And zeal for soul winning. And untiring commitment to pursue souls until they are saved and establishment. We release that zeal, that capacity into you in the name of Jesus. Can I hear an amen to that? Can I hear a believing amen to that? Where you normally start with souls is to pray for them first to be saved before you go looking for them. You can pray for specific people, your neighbors, um, your bosses, your colleagues. Amen. Those in your, in, your, in your social orbit, friends on Facebook, friends, colleagues at school, to be saved and established. Commitment to that praying is an important part of soul winning. So we want to start now and take one minute to pray for some of our friends. Lift up your voice in the second prayer. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, please do not allow anyone in my street to go to hell. Please do not allow 
any of my classmates or schoolmates to go to hell. Please do not allow any of my colleagues or acquaintances at work to go to hell. Please do not allow anyone in my social orbit to go to hell. Please do not allow any of my friends, my family and my loved ones to go to hell. Please do not allow anyone who has crossed my path to go to hell. Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, open their eyes to the gospel and save them in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer with all your heart. And call specific names, classmates, colleagues, call them by name. And say, do not allow this person to go to hell. Save them, Lord. Give me an opportunity to share the gospel. Open your mind and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, please do not allow anyone on my street to go to hell. Please do not allow any of my classmates or schoolmates to go to hell. Please do not allow any of my colleagues or acquaintances to, at work to go to hell. Please do not allow anyone in my social orbit to go to hell. Please do not allow any of my friends, my family, and my loved ones to go to hell. Please do not allow anyone who has crossed my path to go to hell. Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, open their eyes to the gospel and save them in the name of Jesus. Mande la gada zada. Lokoto skeporo jadaska. Mande la gada skeporo jadaska. Mande la gada jadaska. Mande la gada jadaska. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Can I hear an amen to that? I come into agreement with you. No one on your street will go to hell in the name of Jesus. None of your classmates, schoolmates, colleagues, acquaintances, those in your social orbit, your friends, your family, your loved ones, and anyone that has crossed your path will go to hell. None of them will go to hell in the name of Jesus. God will open up an opportunity for you to share the gospel with them and open their eyes to the gospel so they will be saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Can I hear an amen to that? Now I have just one minute, amen, for you to pray for yourself. He said you can ask whatever you want. Amen. You can ask whatever you want when you bear fruit. So open your mouth and ask whatever you want. You have just one minute. Thank you, Jesus. name we have prayed. Can I hear an amen to that? Every request you have placed before God, they are done. The answers are released unto you now in the name of Jesus. Now lift up your hands and lift up your voice and receive this prophetic declaration. As the Lord lives, no more shall your name be dragged in the mud. No more shall the mockers be able to whisper behind your back. No more shall the slander and negative label stick. No more shall you be termed, forsaken, or abandoned. No more shall you suffer shame and reproach again. Because God will do such a new and glorious thing in your life in this season, even in this very month, that will cause those of the synagogue of Satan to bow before you. It will cause your mockers to bow before you. It will cause those that were incensed against you to seek your favor. Those that think you do not matter, you will become, they, they will look for you. And as people change their opinions concerning Paul, when he shook the viper into the fire and was unharmed, so shall these, those whisperers change their opinion when they see the glory of the Lord rising upon your life in this season. In the name of Jesus. Get ready for multiplied celebrations in your life in this season. 
In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and give him thanks. Lift up your voice and give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him the glory. All honor, all majesty, all power, and all dominion belongs to him. We give you glory, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Friday, powerful service. Sunday, powerful service. Lift up your hands for the closing prayer. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your bond sacrifice, Selah. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. We will rejoice in your salvation. And in the name of our God, we set up our banners. May the Lord answer all your prayers in Jesus' name. Can I hear an amen to that? Lift up your hands for the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lift up his countenance over you and be gracious unto you. Cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Make you a thousand times greater than your dreams. And a thousand times better than you think. And a thousand times wiser than everyone thinks. And a thousand times richer in every good and gracious thing. The Lord make you a thousand times healthier in your spirit, your soul, and your body. And a thousand times happier every day of your life. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Can I hear an amen to that? Every issue you come to church with, they are turned into testimonies in Jesus' name. Let's share the grace of fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, bless and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Go, come back with your testimonies. In Jesus' name, good night and thank you.